Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on an Emily doll from the movie Corpse Bride. To create the body I'm using the skeleton Create a Monster doll from Monster High with one arm and one leg of a different Create a Monster doll. Using these Create a Monster dolls makes it easy to replace the arm and leg that you usually see on the Corpse Bride customs. So these Create a Monster dolls comes with a piece on the top of the head that you use to attach the wigs. So you're not able to reroute them because it's hard plastic. But I purchased these reroutable or rootable pieces from Retro Dolls US on Etsy. I'll put the link in the description box below if you're interested in purchasing them. But what they are is a little piece of plastic the size of the piece that you'll remove from the scalp of the Create a Monster. So to remove the plastic piece on the top of the head, I used an X-Acto knife and a pair of needle nose pliers. That piece was attached very tightly, so I had to really cut away the whole area around it. But I found that the piece from Retro Dolls US fit perfectly and I glued it with super glue and found that I was able to root it very nicely. The super glue from uh, Dollar Tree, it worked very well to adhere that piece. It was fairly easy and I was able to seal all points. So after painting the scalp blue to match the hair, I started rooting. And like I said, it was able to be rooted very nicely. It's a little flat, but you don't notice it when you have the hair on. So even the areas where that were close to the seam were able to be rooted without the seam separating, and it was just very easy to root the, seam, the piece that was added. So definitely recommend that if you wanted to reroot a Monster High Create a Monster doll. So onto the face up, I removed the face paint with the pure acetone and sprayed her with four coats of Mr. Super Clear and start in on the eyes. So even though the doll is white, I still use some white pencil to lighten that up a little bit more. And then use the black Derwent watercolor to circle the eye. I'm using some pan pastels to do the shading. And I'm using sort of a turquoise blue color for the main areas. And then using a uh, custom mix of a pinkish red from uh, using a couple different pan pastel colors and penciling those in with the pink Durant watercolor. To build up the shading on this doll, I had to use several different or several coats to build up the shading on the um, around the eyelid. Like I mentioned earlier, I have done a couple of other Corpse Bride dolls, and those videos are also available on my channel if you're interested in watching them. The most notable, I made the 28-inch uh, Monster High doll, and it was the super tall one, and you can see a little bit about how I re removed the leg or replaced the leg on that video. So I'm just trying to get the shading the right shape. Uh, the, the shading on the Tim Burton characters tend to be blended out towards the inside of the eyebrow area. So I'm just wanting to push that up with, with still maintaining that white area in the center down the nose. So I have to build up the color and then I'll spray it a couple times with Mr. Super Clear and then go back and do some more shading. So probably about three coats of the shading around the eyelid. So like I said, I've, I've made a few other Corpse Bride dolls, but since my dolls are one of a kind, I always like to make them a little bit different. So the 28 inch Corpse Bride doll, like I said, is st it's still available in the Etsy shop as I'm making this video. Um, I also have made one out of a Skeleta and one out of a Gulia Yelps. This is my first one using a Create a Monster. And I think this may be my favorite because for a couple of reasons. One, because I really like the face sculpt and how the features turned out. And I also like that it, it, the, the features look very soft and she looks kind of prettier than the other ones I've done, I think. 
I don't know. They kind of all look the same, I guess, in, in a way. But I also like that it was done using a Create a Monster doll, so I didn't have to use epoxy sculpt to repair the knee. And that makes me feel like it's a little bit more durable or able to be posed more without risking the epoxy sculpt breaking. So I'm going back with some, uh, like I said, the shading around the eyes and I'm using a little bit of white to blend down, tone down the top part. And then I use some colorless blender as well. If you're interested in this doll, she's still available in my Etsy shop at the time I'm making this video. They tend to go pretty fast and I don't have make very many of them. And because they are uh, one of a kind, there's not very many varieties that I can do. I think I've used most of the dolls that would create this character uh, realistic li looking, so she may be one of my last ones. So now I'm doing some shading around the forehead where I make it look like she's decaying a bit and on the cheek. And then I'm going in and drawing on the character's teeth that show through on the side of her cheek. <laughs> So I'll let you watch the rest of this face paint. I'll check, I'll uh, add in the description box below the affiliate links to the supplies I used. If you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.